Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome here. We got Adams coach Tony Vitrino here on the podcast here. Coach, um, thank, you for, um, thank you for calling in this week on us. My pleasure. It's great talking to you as always. Um, when you look at Adams this year, this team, um, obviously, you got a lot of experience coming back. Recap last year for me, please. Well, last year was a, kind of a disappointment. Um, you know, we didn't play well in the conference, and clearly the conference was really outstanding in terms of talent. We were playing a sophomore quarterback, and, you know, we had Brady, who was a great player, but we weren't real deep in other spots. So, you know, we, I think we learned a lot from last year, and hopefully what we learned last year will help this year. Well, talk about, obviously, you got Ryan back. I mean, obviously, I'm talking about some key players um, on this Adams team that you have this year. Okay, well, we'll start with our fullback, Mateo Humbert. Um, he's a three-year starter for us at fullback, and he's played linebacker, too. So, you know, he's really worked to make himself bigger, faster, and stronger. Um, I, I, he's probably one of the hardest-working players I've ever had in my 35 years. Um, and we expect him to really be a, a dominant force, especially on offense carrying the ball, but also as a really good linebacker. So Mateo's going to be a great two-way starter. Um, and then we have our quarterback again, you know, our offense, it kind of, our, if our quarterback is good, we're usually okay. Um, so Rhino Waters is going to be a junior. Um, he's a little over six, two, about two ten. He's a really tough kid. Um, a really good athlete. He's going to play a little defense for us this year as well at linebackers. So, you know, our battery in the backfield with triple having a good quarterback and fullback makes us more balanced and hopefully more difficult to defend. Um, we have, uh, a returning starter, uh, Liam Kenya, 6'3", 220, just a chiseled specimen um, who will play defensive end and offensive tackle. Opposite him, we have Rowan Kawa, who's 6'4", 288. He'll play the other tackle spot. Um, we're going to be young at the other offensive line positions. That's going to be the biggest question mark for us. We have two uh, really solid, outstanding senior leaders, uh, Tommy Offer and Paxson Battershell, who will play slot for us and also start on defense. Um, and then we have Lockton Tillerson, who is our best returning receiver and corner. Um, he's going to be a big play guy. And we got some juniors I think will surprise some people. Um, what about some X factors? Obviously, when you look at you guys, obviously, I mean, like a lot of people look at Adams, Veer option team. Um, how is the receiving situation over there for you guys? Well, and I think ultimately for us to beat great teams like Lake Orion and Clarkson and West Bluefield is we have to have balance because those are really smart coaches. And if we're one-dimensional, it doesn't matter who we have playing receiver or quarterback, we're going to be in trouble. Um, so I think that, you know, Lachlan Tillerson and Connor Helfrich and uh, Trenton Lagarde and a bunch of other dudes are really stepping up at the receiver position. Our slots can really run routes. Cam Dywood going to be a junior, really good route runner. So we're hoping some of those guys who didn't play much last year can catch some of the balls that we would have thrown to Brady um, and give us some balance so people can't load the box against us. And when you look at, let's look at, obviously, when you look at um, the schedule, I mean, I, when you look at the schedule this year, it is difficult for you guys. You guys open up the year at Dan Barnable Field against Romeo. So how's the, when you look at that matchup, um, obviously, let's look at the schedule here. Obviously, you're non-league first. Um, Romeo, let's talk about them a little bit. What are, what well, are you looking at when you're us? When I see Romeo, I kind of think, look in the mirror. Um, they're somewhere in school size. Um, they The kids... You know, they don't have a bunch of four-star, five-stars, but they got kids. You know, they have D1 guys every now and again. They're very well coached. Um, you know, they're state championship staff, um, and those kids are going to play hard. They're going to block and tackle really, really well, um, and they're really tough at home. So um, for us, we know it's a huge challenge, but we see a lot of ourselves in them. And we played them a couple times over the years in the playoffs, and they've been really tough battles. And then if we move into our crossover sequence by Rochester week two, you know, that's a rivalry game. That's always tough. But then we have a stretch. And I think I would put this three game stretch up against anybody's schedule in the state. Um, we play West Bloomfield, Clarkson, Lake Orion in sequence. So I, I, you know, those are three really, really tough games to have back to back to back. Now they're not going to be easy games at all. I mean, when you look at it and then you look at, you got Oxford on there too, and you yep. know, they're not an easy team. Um, oh. And then let's look at your, let's look at Stony Creek. I mean, obviously, um, you know, you're playing against them, obviously, the um, Rochester um, City area, obviously. So talk about that rivalry with Stony Creek. Yeah, you know, it's, it's always a passionate game. Um, and, you know, I, I, I expect 
Coach Powell and, and I've known his dad for a long, long time to have a great game plan against us. And, you know, Ricky did a nice job scheming against us last year. So we know that's going to be a really tough game. And, you know, that's just kind of how it's going to be. I know that, like, Oxford, for example, uh, who we play after Lake Orion, those coaches know us so well. They're great guys. They're great coaches. The Oxford kids are a lot like our kids. They're going to grind. You know, and then we got to play at we play against North Farmington, um, who, you know, we've had a tough time with over the years because, you know, their coaches do a great job and they know us well from all the Harrison years. And when you look at playing North Farmington, um, you know, and obviously, you know, you know that you're going to get a really tough game. I mean, like, obviously, you know the history of Harrison. I mean, like, right. and when you look at playing against, you know, seeing like a legendary coach and John Harrington on the other side, even though it's yeah. coached by John, Coach John Herstein, what's your yeah. thought process of seeing um, seeing that staff? Well, so they, again, we've been coaching against those guys since 2003. So they know us as well as anybody. You know, we're not going to outsmart anyone at Adams, that's for sure. I mean, everybody knows what we're doing. And so we know that that's going to be a very difficult grind. And those coaches are going to put their kids in a position to make it very difficult for us. So um, that always makes it difficult because they're just so familiar with what we do and how we do it, especially offensively. Um, let's talk about program strength. Obviously, um, we look at the um, sub-varsity teams. We look at the uh, freshman JV teams, talk about your middle school teams, and also talk about your um, – you know, and also talk about your um, youth levels. So um, our, our last year, our freshman JV were very competitive teams. They were small rosters, but they were really tough kids. And they both had very successful seasons, big in the, beating the schools that were much bigger than us. Um, but this year, believe it or not, this is the most kids we've had in our program since 07. We'll have 40 on the freshman, 40 on the JV, and over 40 on the varsity. So we haven't had those kinds of numbers at the lower levels. So... It was really hard for us, at, especially at the JV level, because we're playing teams like Lake Orion and 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 Clarkson and West Memphis with a two platoon at the JV level, and we got eight guys going both ways, you know, with a 22 man roster. So, you know, we won a lot of those games, but now that we have a little bit more depth in the program, I'm excited to see what those guys do. Um, and we get players from two different middle schools um, and from our local club team, now called the Rochester Raiders. They used to be the Redskins. I don't really ever, I've never paid attention to anybody in the middle school, so I have no idea what they're doing. So, when they show up, I co- when they show up as a freshman, I coach them. And when you look at, of course, you look at, of course, the um, backbone at the middle school feeder program, obviously, when you look at you guys, um, how, how did you learn the Veer offense? I mean, obviously, you brought the Veer into the OAA. I mean, like, talk about, you know what I mean, what the Veer brings for, for, for anybody who doesn't know the game of football. Okay, wonderful question. Um, it all started way back in the late 80s uh, when I was coaching at U of D Jesuit. Um, I coached a guy named Ron Rice who went to Eastern and played for the Detroit Lions, and he was a sophomore quarterback. He was 15 years old, and we were playing in the Central Division of the Catholic League at that time, so Catholic Central, De La Salle, Brother Rice, you, you know, St. Mary's. So we didn't have a lot of linemen, so what gave us an opportunity to at least make some first downs and move the ball and keep possession against those great teams was running triple. So that's where it all started. I learned most of it from Tony Anise, who's now the head coach at Ferris State University, um, and his brother coached with me for many years, and that's where I learned most of the fundamentals. You know, I've studied you know, the academies and everyone who does their own little wrinkle on it. Um, and when I went to Bishop Foley before I came to Adams, we were in the same same boat. You know, we had a 22-man varsity roster playing – De La Salle and Brother Rice and St. Mary's in those schools, the pours back in the day. And for us to be successful, we had to double at the point of attack, read somebody, and that way we're only having to block 10 guys instead of 11. So that's really the premise. Um, clearly what we do now is much more diversified with the spread option. Um, still running elements of triple that people have to prepare for, but with people load the box, we can do some other things now. And I have to give a lot of credit to my son, Mark Petrito, who's helping me call the offense now and helping me kind of expand my thought processes on the offensive side. And then talk about your defense. Obviously, you got one of the best defensive minds in the game. So talk about your defense a little bit, if you could. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's where it begins and ends. You know, it's like Mark McClellan's, I, you know, I like to make the argument he's the best coordinator around, um, and I'm not trying to offend anybody else. But if you look at what he's done with us at Adams over the last 22 years, you know, really we don't have a competitive defense. Um and he does. He puts our guys in the best position to to be successful. We obviously changed a little bit over the years from an over under four three to more of an oaky front. But 
one thing I always trust Coach McFarland to do when he has complete autonomy is to give our kids the best chance to get our defense off the field and hopefully our offense back on the field. Before I let you go, Coach, um, what are the expectations this year at Adams? Obviously, you know, you look at Adams, always a perennial power within the red, obviously. Um, so what is your expectations this year? Well, I, I think it's, it's you got to be reasonable. And it's like, you know, you could be a really, really good team like Oxford or Adams and win two games in the OA Red or no games in the OA Red. And there'd be no shame in that, to be perfectly candid with you. But our expectations, like 21 and 22, is to win the league. So um, last year was not good. We had three league losses, and that's just not acceptable. So, But we know we have a very small margin for error. If we're not executing at a high level, no pre-snap penalties, no turnovers, we have to take care of the ball and finish drives with touchdowns, not field goals. We know we, as an Adams to beat the biggies and to beat the great four teams in our conference, we got to play close to perfect to win. So that's what we're going to strive for. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but we're going to give it our best shot. Adams coach Tony Petrino here. Thank you for calling in this week here on the podcast and good luck this season and good luck against Romeo week one. Thank you very much. Have a good one, man. Yeah, take care. Bye.